Studies have documented that families who habitually eat dinner together seem to raise children with better homework skills, higher grades, greater emotional control, and more confidence. And get this, simply making your bed in the morning is correlated with better productivity, a greater sense of well-being, and stronger skills at sticking with a budget. So, small changes create widespread changes. And that reminds me of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 which says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. The prophet Daniel practiced one habit every single day, three times a day, and that habit was prayer. The problem comes when the habit of prayer is mechanical, like the habit of making your bed every morning, which should be mechanical, but praying should not be mechanical. Jesus warned, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. The words you pray should be expressions from the heart, not mechanical, mindless repetitions. Brain scans show that when people recite memorized prayers and repetitive mantras, the same brain regions are activated as when reciting nursery rhymes. These are simply regions of recall, rote learning, and repetition. But the prefrontal cortex is not engaged at all. The prefrontal cortex is the region of the brain responsible for higher level moral development, empathy, relational interaction, and self-reflection. However, when the habit of prayer is relational, like the habit of families who eat dinner together, which should be relational, the prefrontal cortex is activated along with other regions of the brain that are also activated when you talk to a friend. Such as regions associated with anticipation, the expression of individuality, and consideration of your friend's responses, attitudes, and feelings. In the aftermath of the 9-11-2001 terrorist attack, University of Michigan scientists evaluated the impact of prayer in coping with trauma and discovered that students who prayed in the aftermath of the trauma had better psychological adjustment. Of course, you would expect that one year later, better than those who did not pray. But they also evaluated Muslim refugees of Kosovo and Bosnia and found that many of them also prayed to cope with the stress. But 60% of them had ongoing PTSD. Interestingly, they found that 77% of them had negative forms of prayer, such as praying that their enemies would pay for what they had done. In other words, prayers of vengeance. They found that positive prayers and practices were related to high levels of optimism, hope, and healthy adjustment. But justice-seeking and anger-related religious practices that pursued vengeance were related to reduced levels of optimism, hope, and healthy adjustment. They concluded that it depends which God you pray to, how you pray, and for what you pray. Daniel's prayer life reveals that he knew God was his friend and helper. And in answer to Daniel's prayers, God gave him clear cinematic presentations and detailed meaningful answers that showed how there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, a God who loves you with an everlasting love and wants to be your friend and helper too.